Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we're starting a new build, a push dagger. Not just one, but two push daggers. I'm going to be making it out of this piece of Damascus. Uh, this is something I made previously. It's 17 layers of 1095 and 16 layers of 15 and 20. We're going to cut this up, restack it uh, to give us a few more layers. It'll be around 125, 130 layers, uh, and then we'll make our push dagger. I figured on this video I would take you through all the prep that goes into doing a restack for Damascus. I start out by cutting it up on the bandsaw. Now that I've got it cut up into four, I can take the angle grinder to take the scale off it. This will save belts on the 2x72. Now I'm going to grind smooth all the faces that are going to touch. I've stacked them up, clamped them, and welded the ends. Now into the kerosene and into the forge. When I get the billet up to a red heat, I'll usually take it out, put some of this borax flux on it. That'll keep the scale from forming in the cracks. You know it's hot enough when you take it out of the forge and the borax is steaming off the billet. Here I'm doing some light presses just to set the weld. After three heats of setting the weld, now it's nice and set. We can start drawing out the billet. You'll notice this billet is pretty wide. That's because the push dagger handle is pretty wide. We're gonna take this down later when we forge in the blade. You'll probably notice this is way more Damascus than we need for this project. Don't worry, we're gonna use it for another project coming up. The end of the billet is going to be where our handle is. Now I'm starting to put in a taper where the blade goes. I'm going to cut this section off with the angle grinder and then we'll start to forge each knife on its own. I started doing a bit of work at the anvil here, but then thought, I'm just going to use the press for all of this. There's no point in trying to hammer this out by hand. Both the blades are still pretty thick at this point, close to 3 eighths. So time to thin them out and get a little length. I wanted to make sure I had enough width in the handle for the profile that I wanted, so here I'm putting them sideways and just fullering them out a little bit. They were still a little too thick, so I figured I would draw them out even more. And now finally, just making sure they're flat. So we got the forging done on these, and before anyone says, oh, you didn't forge them to shape, <laughs> there's a reason I didn't forge these to shape. Because they have a fuller in them, I want to do those on the mill. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is grinding these sides perfectly straight, and then locking it in the mill and then milling this section. And that will give me my center line. And then I will be able to uh, grind out the rest. So it's really hard to do a fuller like this with uh, not inside the mill. It's a really narrow fuller. So that's what we're going to do. 
Then I'm probably going to end up, once I get them, um, I have the center line, somehow I'm going to clamp them together. I'm going to see if I can do most of the grinding with them clamped together so that I have them identical. Here I'm grinding the sides parallel so that I can lock them in the vise on the mill. Just like before, I'm using the angle grinder to get rid of all that scale before I ruin any of my belts. A few minutes on the surface grinder and we'll get these all nice and flat. This is obviously sped up quite a bit. Milling in each fuller took about 10 minutes each. So we got the fullers done in these. Um, they look pretty good. They're a little deeper than I wanted, but um, I'm sure they'll be fine once all these are ground. Because I did want it to taper. And uh, they're not really that thick, but we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll turn out uh, just fine. <clears throat> so um, I've got my pattern here. And uh, one tip for you guys, when you're doing patterns like this, even on knife print or if you're drawing them, um, one thing I always do is when you when you're gonna cut it out um, instead of just cutting the whole thing out they're never symmetrical because the way there's not a I wish knife print had a draw half the knife and then mirror it so that the points are exactly the same but they never are so what I do is fold it down the center line like this and then Cut it out on one side because then you know it's perfectly mirrored so that's a good tip for you guys so I'm gonna cut the other one out I'm gonna glue these on and go do the rough profiling I figured I should grind each knife separately before I stack them together and do the final profile with them clamped together You can see I have a few issues here, trying to hold the one, two, three block while also grinding. It doesn't work out that well. There, instead of holding this, I just put a three eighth bolt through here. So this is nice and solid, be a lot easier now. I can't say enough good things about these can't twist clamps. If you don't have any, go get some. Links down in the description. Now it's time to do some bevels. Let's start with some scribe lines. I'm starting here with a used 36 grit belt just to break the edges. If you start with a new belt, you're just going to knock all the abrasives off it. I do this to all eight bevels before I move to a new belt. If you haven't used these belts, definitely go get some. I'm going to show you, this is a brand new belt, I'm going to show you what this looks like after grinding both of these blades. Hey, I just want to stop and show you guys something. When you're doing a dagger, don't be afraid to go past your center line on the first grind. Because as you can see, I'm going to do this one and then the next one, you'll get your uh, your center ridge from when this one when you grind this one. Because you, you need to grind a lot off and you're going to be grinding more off over here. And that's going to bring your uh, your distal taper up. So you'll see when I grind this one what happens.
So there they are after initial grind. Came up pretty good, nice and even. And something I wanted to show you guys. Check that out. That belt looks brand new and I just did eight bevels on it. Pretty cool. Here they are after grinding, at least the initial grind. They feel very stabby stabby. So pretty cool. Next thing, uh, I'm gonna drill a couple holes. I'll drill some pin holes. I'm probably gonna put two pins in each one for the scales. Uh, do a couple rate weight reduction holes. They're just a tiny bit handle heavy. And then I'm gonna just do a little filing and just round this stuff out here so it's not as hard on your hands. Let's go do it. Well, I just did something dumb. I went and filed this, but I got a little over uh, over anxious and filed up here. But of course, I forgot about the handle. <laughs> so the handle scales are going to cover that area, and now it's beveled, which means I'm going to get a crazy bevel, you know, against the handle scale, which is going to look dumb. So I need to take these back to the small wheel and flatten these right here because I want the scales to come to about there. Eh. Since I'm gonna have to clamp them together to uh, grind this part, I figured I would do the holes as well for the pins. So two pins, gonna do whoop, one here and one here. I forgot to turn the camera on when drilling the holes, but I imagine you've seen holes drilled before. As usual, I've already normalized this blade and done two grain reduction cycles. Now it's time for quench. This was 10 series steel, so this was quenched in Parks 50. I ground into the handle on each of the knives just to remove any decarb, and now I'm testing them on the tester. So here we are after temper. Let's check the hardness now. Sixty one and a half. Here they are after the temper. Uh, you just saw me um, check the hardness. Uh, actually, that one was a, was the highest uh, one when I uh, did a couple of them. They ended up being right around 59 and a half. So that first one was an anomaly. But um, yeah, they're right around 59 and a half, maybe 60. Now it's time to do the final grinding on these daggers. I'm starting my final grinding on a 128 grit belt from Broadbeck. This is one of their revolution belts. Then I'm going to move up to the game changers. Since everybody likes hand sanding, I figured I'd give you a little montage of all the hand sanding I had to do for these blades. First I start on the flats, then I'm sanding the fullers, and more work on the fullers,
And finally, the bevels. Since the carbon fiber I selected for the handle material is only 8 inch, I decided to add double liners just to make it a little thicker. So here are the blades after being sanded to 400. Uh, I still got to put my maker's mark in them and then I'll do the final sanding uh, to 800. Now I'm going to move uh, just to hit the handle material so I can get this glued up so it's gl gluing while I'm doing the rest of the handle. So let's get that done. My one complaint about the red G10 liners from Jantz is they don't really show up against black. So uh, I want to get some brighter red. Now it's time to put my maker's mark on the blade. And this time I had enough room on the Ricasso, so it worked out great. Okay, I've got the blades all sanded to 800 grit. Um, you saw me put my maker's mark in there. Um, in this video, I'm going to take you through my entire etching process. You'll see exactly what I do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is wash these things um, with soap and water on both sides. So I'm going to leave this in the first time uh, for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to bring it out, wash off the oxides. Uh, notice I'm going to keep it wet before I put it in there. That's a tip I got from uh, Salem Straub. And in it goes. Uh, this this ferric chloride is about three to one with uh, ferric chloride to vinegar um, So it's going to go in there for a couple of minutes Then I'm going to scrub the oxides off and then it'll go back in and I'm gonna do a bunch of cycles I want a pretty deep etch on this one Okay, we're gonna pull this out now and uh, check it out Okay, it's looking pretty good All right, let's take the oxides off. First thing, I'm just gonna neutralize it with some Windex. And I've got some 3,000, sorry, 2,000 grit sandpaper here. And I'm just gonna take the oxides off and then we're gonna put it back in. So now I'm going to leave it in for probably eight minutes and I'm going to do probably two, maybe three rounds of that. So the blades are on their final etching round and that round you don't want to clean off the oxides and now they're going to go into coffee. So here I'm going to just use pretty much a whole thing of coffee in this heated cylinder or container here. So what I'm going to do is just um, take the blades out, rinse them in water, and then immediately they're going to go into the coffee. So they'll stay in there for at least two to three hours, preferably five to six, and uh, we'll pull them out and they should be nice and black. Because I laid out all the handle profiles on one 10 inch piece of uh, carbon fiber, I really had to be careful cutting these out. So I ended up using a Dremel just to get around the edges. So these have been in the coffee for four or five hours. Now I'm gonna pull them out um, and wash them off. What I'm gonna do is just run these under cold water and then I'm immediately going to cover them in mineral oil and I'm going to let them hang. And that's a really important um, step. You don't want to touch them. You don't want to rub them. Um, just let the mineral oil do its thing.
So here we are folks, um, coffee etch is all done. Uh, I've taped them up just to protect them, but you guys have kind of seen it already. Uh, now I'm just getting ready to do the, um, the handles. I want to drill the pins. Uh, I don't have a lot of space around these things because I tried to get them all into one um, 10 inch spot. So uh, I got to make sure that I got them all correct, which I think I do. So we'll clamp these up, go drill the holes, and then we'll start to bevel the fronts. I wanted to put little beveled angles at the front of the scales uh, where they meet the ricasso just to match the same angle as the plunge lines. Here I'm doing final sanding on the areas that I won't be able to sand later once they're on the knife. Everything's clean with acetone, time for glue up. Now it's time to grind down the G10 pins so they're all nice and flat and then I'll be able to flip the grinder horizontally and do my profiles. Now on the small wheel I'll do the inside curves and then I actually bevel all of the angles around the handle and sand it but I'm not going to bother showing you guys all that. Now we're on to sharpening with the Wicked Edge Go. We'll put some nice fine edges on these. A little bit of stropping and now we're ready to cut some things up. Thanks for watching folks. I hope you enjoyed this push dagger build. I had a great time doing it. Remember, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.